Why did magicians of the 19th century have to prove that they did not possess supernatural powers? How did Harry Houdini try to convince Arthur Conan Doyle that ghosts did not exist? And why did he fail? In this episode, I will tell you some cool and pretty absurd stories about how magicians of the past fought against spiritualist mediums. My name is Alex Romanov. This is Art of Impossible in partnership with The Vanishing Inc. Let's start. In the 19th century, spiritualism, the movement based on the idea of communicating with spirits of the dead, was extremely popular. One of the reasons that so many people, including prominent scientists, were advocates of spiritualism was that the 19th century was the time of unprecedented development of science and technology. Sounds like a paradox, doesn't it? Scientific progress and belief in ghosts? Well, actually, it makes a lot of sense. Just imagine, in the 19th century, you could be born in a village and use candles and sleep in a barn. And then, several decades later, you could live in a town which was illuminated with electric light and you could send messages using telegraph. You could take photographs and even watch films. It all looked like a miracle. So one could easily say, maybe spiritualist phenomena, all this speaking with the ghost, just represent another layer of reality. Maybe communicating with spirits is scientifically possible, and science will explain it sooner or later. The explanation was, of course, much simpler. Spiritualist mediums who claim to be able to communicate with spirits use deception techniques, misdirection and psychological manipulation to create the apparently supernatural effects. It was obvious to magicians who were masters of deception themselves and were creating amazing illusions on stage. So no surprise magicians described people who believed in spiritualism as uneducated, irrational, soft-brained people that were enemies of the scientific progress. John Neville Maskelyne, a prominent magician, inventor and skeptic, was one of the most famous critics of spiritualism. He published many books on the subject in which he exposed the secret behind the most popular spiritualistic feats. And he was recreating spiritualist phenomena in his magic shows. Yet it turned out to be quite difficult to convince believers that spiritualism was not real. And this is fascinating because these stories that I'm going to tell you illustrate how strange human mind can be. Spiritualists could claim that magicians use supernatural powers and are just mediums or psychics in disguise. This sounds crazy, right? Here are some stories to prove that it actually happened. In 1869, John Neville Maskelyne was invited to perform for a group of spiritualists. At the end of his show, Benjamin Coleman, also known as the father of English spiritualism, declared Maskelyne to be as powerful as any mediums he had ever seen. What can one think of these deluded people after that? Maskelyne wrote later. The same thing happened when Maskelyne tried to debunk the Davenport brothers. American mediums Ira and William Davenport became world famous because of their spirit cabinet act. During this act, they were tied with ropes and locked in a cabinet with musical instruments. Apparently, they could not move, yet the audience could hear the sound of instruments as if they were played by spirits. When the cabinet was opened, Davenport were still tied to their chairs. John Masculine recreated this act in every detail and performed it on stage to prove that there was nothing supernatural about it. And yet many people refused to believe that it was done with natural methods and claimed that Masculine possessed supernatural powers. One of those people was Alfred Wallace, a scientist who independently came up with the theory of evolution, pretty much at the same time as Charles Darwin. 
so definitely not a soft-brained guy. And I must admit that this reaction is understandable. Some illusions that magicians performed were indeed so incomprehensible that members of the audience could not find any rational explanation. And magicians did not provide any explanations because they had to keep their secrets, so they just said, it's a trick. But what does it mean really when you think about this statement? What trick? You just levitated on stage, it's a freaking miracle! One day, Sir Oliver Lodge, a British physicist who, by the way, was also involved in development of the radio, came to the performance of the famous magician David Devant, who performed a second sight act with his sister. Uh, one part of this act was that his sister could read the contents of sealed envelopes provided by the spectators. So Sir Oliver Lodge came with a specially sealed envelope which he challenged Devant's sister to read. She did it just like she always did, and he was so amazed that he got up from his seat and made a speech to the audience. He said he could not understand by what means this marvel had been accomplished, as he knew nothing in science that could account for it. And finally he said that Devant and his sister obviously were using some higher powers. After the show, Devon tried to assure Sir Lodge that what he saw was trickery, but the scientist did not believe it. These persons usually accuse me of being a medium who is prostituting great powers and posing as a conjurer for monetary gain. Nothing I can say will convince them to the contrary. Even a nervous tremor which I unfortunately developed in my left hand was quoted as evidence of the power within me. Devant complained later. Harry Houdini, a legendary escape artist and a magician, was friends with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of one of the most rational fictional characters in history, Sherlock Holmes. Ironically, Doyle was a believer in spiritualism, and he also believed in fairies. True story, google it. Harry Houdini wanted to convince Doyle that he should not believe in spiritualism, so he decided to perform the ultimate spiritualist phenomenon for Doyle. It looked like this. A big slate was hung in the center of the room. Doyle was asked to go out of the house, write some words on a small piece of paper, then put it back in his pocket and return to the house which he did. Then Houdini asked him to take a cork ball, which had been soaked in the white ink, and hold the ball against the side of the slate. The ball mysteriously stuck there. It began rolling across the surface of the slate, leaving a white track. As the ball rolled, it spelled the words Mene, Mene, Tekel, Uparsim. And these were the words that Doyle had secretly written. Great trick! Harry Houdini assured Doyle that what he had just witnessed was nothing more than a clever illusion. But Doyle refused to believe it. He was sure that Harry Houdini had supernatural powers. History shows us that magic, unlike any other art form, can be perceived as something real. And it makes it both very powerful and also quite dangerous, because the border between belief and disbelief is very, very thin. So it is important to remember that every magician is responsible for making sure that his audience has absolutely no doubt that whatever happens on stage is nothing more than an artistic representation of the impossible, not the impossible itself. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if at some point in your magic career you got in a situation when what you did was perceived as real magic, then please share your story in the comments under this video. And of course, don't forget to like if you liked, and subscribe if you want to watch more episodes and more videos about 
history of magic and magicians. Also, I must add that, of course, the question of belief and disbelief, and belief and disbelief in spiritualism in particular, is a very complex and complicated one. So in this video, I just shared some amusing stories. But if you really want to get a better understanding of the problem, why did people believe in these things and why they didn't, and if you want to understand which mechanisms are at play here, I can really recommend a book by Peter Lamont that is called Extraordinary beliefs, a historical approach to a psychological problem. Amazing book which analyzes uh, psychological aspects of this question throughout history. It talks about spiritualism and mesmerism, history of the 19th century, um, psychics and mediums and magicians. Great read if you are interested in magic or mentalism or psychology or just history. Uh, highly recommend. My name is Alex Romanov. This was Art of Impossible. I will see you next time.